I didn't hear him come in. I didn't hear anything. And all of a sudden, there was someone standing in my door, the bedroom door. And I looked up and I thought it was my dad at first, you know, because he, you know, he drives weird hours and he might have come in early because it was early in the morning. And nope, it wasn't my dad. So um, he came in, he had a ski mask on and jumped on the bed and had a knife. And I don't, I don't exactly remember what he said, but something to the effect of, you know, don't scream, don't, you know, whatever. And tied my hands behind my back. He, he, he put a cut over my eye, over my eye, but I didn't even realize that I had been cut. And um, I guess part of what he said is that, you know, I don't, even, I don't know what he said. I just remember feeling extremely threatened. After it was all over and done with, he went through the stuff in the room, took money out of my purse, took um, some coin books and stuff that I had, and took a piece of jewelry. I don't, it, it, it was just something that I had just gotten. I don't even know what it was. Um, and I laid in the bed for, it seemed like forever, forever. Because I'd never heard that I was waiting for the door to close and I never heard the door close. So I was afraid to get up to, you know, to see. And finally I said, okay, this, this is do or die. I don't, oh, I don't hold it against him. There's something wrong with him. You know, there's something not wired right or whatever, you know, for someone to, you know, to do this continually. So is that the, Something, either he had some trauma or he had something that caused that, I have no idea. But I know it's not, it's not good to hold hate in your heart and all that, and I don't think I do. Um, I'm just a lot more careful. <laughs> I don't want him to be dead because I think that would have been the easy way out for him. And I don't want that, I'd rather, you know, him be tried and convicted and spend the rest of his life in prison. There's been anniversaries that have gone by, you know, it's been like the 20th of June and it's like, oh, the 18th came and come, that's good, I'm done. And then there's sometimes it just, I wake up and, and I'm, I'm upset and I don't really realize what I'm upset about and then all of a sudden, oh, it's the 18th. I'm not as open as I used to be. I, you know, I used to, um, if I, like I said, if I'm in a crowd, I'm on the, I'm on the outskirts. I'm not in the crowd. Even if it's a bunch of people I know, I'm not in the, in the crowd. I'm more on the outskirts watching everybody. You know, it's like there's no one behind me type thing, you know. No one can, I can see everybody and no one can, I, I can see everybody looking at me. Let's put it that way. Um, that hasn't, and that wasn't like that before. Every now and then you, you get the little thing, you know, little, sharp, you know, tinglies between the shoulder blades. So I'm like, someone's watching me and you, you can turn around and look and, but I don't, that's gotten a lot better. <laughs> it doesn't happen a lot anymore.
I woke up with a hand over my mouth. And I rolled out of bed. I just swung my arm. I said, what are you doing? He was going down the hall, and he was just hitting me. And um, then I just pretended that he knocked me out, so he quit hitting me. And then I put socks stuffed in my mouth, blindfolded, gagged, hands tied, legs tied. And then, you know, pulled me up like this, because I was on my stomach, and put me back in bed and said, if you move, I'm going to kill you. So, you know, <laughs> lay there for two hours. And he came in, I don't know, I think five different times or something like that over the course of the night and raped me. And while you're laying there thinking you're going to die, you just are pretty sure that, you know, I mean, I remember just kind of being in shock. I'm just laying there on my stomach shivering because I had a fever. And you know how you get the chills and you shake? And, and uh, so... Um, you know, finally, after, I mean, our best guess is two hours. It went on a long time. At about 4.30 in the morning, I had heard a car drive away, and I started counting to 60 because I didn't have any concept of time. So I counted to 60 30 times, and I figured then a half hour would have gone by with no noise in the house. And I got up and didn't know if he was there. I used to say, and I'm sure that, you know, who knows, like we, I, I remember saying when it was still going on, if they ever catch this guy, they should lay him on the floor and let everybody that he raped get to do whatever they want to him. You know, I just thought that's what we should get to do. And then that thought kind of went away. But I thought, you know, we should get to do what we want. You know, we had to go through this. I don't think that I would need to hurt him you know if I if he was caught I don't need to get any revenge I don't need anything like that I I just liked it there to be closure but I have to say you know there hasn't it's felt pretty close to me for a long time I do not I'm always aware of anybody coming up behind me and it's not a fear I don't have a fear with that I'm just aware I'll look over my shoulder all the time um, and you know, it's just the way, I, I, I'm sure that came out of it, but that's my, um, I guess, you know, my rationalization that I can do all these things because I'm super aware of what's going on. I, I have to do a lot of self-talk when my husband's away for the weekend. I have to tell myself that there's somebody next door that's a single woman that stays home every night by herself and she hasn't been adapted. I mean, I have to do this all, every time he goes away, and he doesn't go away very much, maybe at the most once a year. But I don't just peacefully go to sleep every night.